The other thing that came out of this conversation, like I said before, was the whole the whole topic of cultural appropriation. Um, and there was a conversation on the view, apparently, about appropriation versus assimilation, right? Um, one of the co-hosts, I cannot remember, I don't watch the view, I just get tagged and post about the view from time to time. Um, one of my friends on Facebook, someone I went to high school with, love him dearly, but he's a Facebook bully. <laughs> he knows he is. He does it on purpose. But he posted a, he posted this video and he was like, you know, Whoopi Goldberg is making some really good points. Basically, Whoopi Goldberg was challenging the notion of cultural assimilation because um, cultural pro cultural appropriation by saying that, you know, black people talking about cultural appropriation like it's the music. Everyone just makes music and it just exists and it's all mixed in, it's all together. So it's not really cultural appropriation. And then she also challenged the fact that like black women, for example, will get weaves and have blonde hair um, and that that's cultural appropriation. So so the conversation that unfolded and, and the, the other co-hosts, the other black co-hosts on the show, she, she wasn't really able to articulate it very well because she had everyone else chiming in. And so here's the problem, right? Trying to have this type of conversation and dialogue, but you have to, you have to take the time then to educate everyone else around you. So if I got to continue to talk to you and teach you to kind of get you up to speed, it makes it really difficult. Now, wait a minute, Noah, that's not fair. You want us all to be able to have this conversation, but you don't want to teach me. Well, you know, I, I, I appreciate when my friends who are not black or not of color, um, I find that's really actually usually um, my Latino friends usually never have to ask these questions. I'm just going to put it like that. You know, we as being a part of, you know, a subgroup within a dominant culture, you know, do, uh, dominant culture have had to pay attention to the cues. We've had to learn how to walk within different cultures, within different worlds, so to speak. We've had to pay attention. Y'all just not paying attention because we make you pay attention. Like, seriously, um, that's not a diss. That's not to make anyone uncomfortable or anything like that, but it's just what it is. You know, like one of the other co-hosts, she was saying, well, I was able to have a conversation with one of my black friends and I had to give her a disclaimer, like, I'm not trying to be ignorant or rude. I just need to be the ask you questions without, look, you should just, 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 it, it's even with like touching hair, right? It's, you should just be able to think like, if I have to say, please don't get offended by what I'm about to say, maybe you shouldn't say it. Maybe you just shouldn't say it because why do we have to continue to contain our emotions, our feelings, our experience in a manner in which that permits you to be comfortable with engaging in this dialogue? How does that help us do anything, right? So this conversation about cultural appropriation versus assimilation was really interesting because this notion that members of a subgroup of a, of a, of a, and within a dominant group can somehow appropriate versus being trying to assimilate for greater acceptance. You know, we look at Eurocentric standards of beauty and, and, and granted, a lot of people who are of European descent do not fit, you know, that, that stereotypical, you know, wasp imagery of beauty and it's still shoved down all our throats. But when you're a woman of color, particularly when you're, you're a black woman with, with natural hair, with thick, coarse hair, you know, you're, you're told that, and I mean, and you are actually told this. I remember being in inroads in high school and this is reinforced by other Black people. These are reinforced by people who are socializing us to go into the work world. Inroads is an internship program. You know, uh, when I was my senior year, we were told that we need no braids. You know, no, no, no braids, no twists, no locks. You know, right now. So basically, if I can't twist my hair, can't braid my hair, can't wear locks, what else am I supposed to do with my hair? Basically, you're telling me only I can do is press it or permit. So we're being told that in order to be successful, in order to go out into the world, you must straighten your hair. Now, of course, now that's changing. People have been challenging that notion. You see more and more people out in out in public, you know, with with in the workplace and professionals, you know, professional uh, uh, occupations. One of my one of my good friends from from law school. Um, shout out to Vonda Kirby. Um, Vonda has a beautiful set of locks, and she's one of like the most powerful top attorneys or whatever in Louisville. So. Um, so, I mean, it is to find the odds, but this notion that somehow, I mean, when you have generations of being told that your natural hair, that your skin, that your features are not attractive, but then someone else goes ahead, you know, we have people wearing, we have white people wearing the fake locks, the cornrows, the butt injections, the lip enhancers, you know, all that stuff now. So now all of a sudden it's acceptable and it's in vogue, but when it's on a black woman, it's a problem. That's cultural appropriation in some ways, right? Same thing with the music. I mean, that was the whole blow up with Justin Timberlake was like, you know, 
you go from doing your little b-boy pop in sync thing now all of a sudden you blow up you know doing more straight r&b you know type music and albeit he's had an easier and more successful time you could say than some other artists who who are african-american music i agree does get a little get a little funky but um but that was just a really interesting conversation i think that we need to continue having though about how culture exists here in the united states and how people are trying to develop and curate, you know, culture, and people want to voyeuristically enjoy it. But the point that I think Jesse got to, which was excuse me, crucial, is it's not that people can't enjoy other cultures. You know, we all enjoy other cultures. We all like, you know, other dress, other styles of doing things. We we learn different languages. We eat different foods. But you also need to be about the people. You can't just commodify what you like about something and not want to deal with people, you know, overall at all. So that was that was kind of what I, my takeaway from that whole thing. Um, you know, kudos to Jesse for using that platform in that manner.